Welcome to this special presentation. One of the highlights of my life was meeting the Holly family and working with them and recording with them. And I've been to Lubbock, Texas, where Buddy Holly was born. I've been to the crash site outside of Mason City, Iowa, Clear Lake, Iowa, where Buddy Holly crashed 65 years ago this Saturday, February 3rd, the day the music died. Been full circle with this. and. Uh, Buddy's music is the inspiration behind my music, and that's why I started playing guitar many years ago, as a lot of you. And I'm, I was really honored to interview Larry Holly in Lubbock, Texas. It was February 3rd, the anniversary of Buddy's death, 2012, four, uh, 12 years ago. And Larry just passed away uh, recently. Well, it's been a couple of years, I think, almost April 2022. And I sat down with him for probably a couple of hours. Uh, his, his daughter Sherry and I played a couple of songs for him um, and I got to interview him and it's just a great opportunity for me to learn about this man. He was a Marine, once a Marine, always a Marine and I have that whole story on my Voices of History channel. Uh, Larry Holly remembered as it were in his military career. A part of Larry Holly I don't think many people know about. This video is going to focus on Buddy's life and Larry's relationship with Buddy and how they recorded That'll Be the Day and a lot of the things they did and Buddy's rise to, quote, fame and stardom and how his life ended tragically at 22 years of age. So Larry talks about a lot of things here in this interview. I've never shared it before. I've got a three minute clip called My Brother Buddy and uh, that's on my um, Voices of History channel also. It's had about a half a million views. So. But folks, I want to share this with you today, and uh, I think it'll be enlightening to you. He talks about the plane crash, and he, as a pilot, gives his thoughts about what he thinks happens, what he thought happened that night, and uh, it just it's a great interview, so I hope you can share it with others, and I'm happy to bring it to you today. So God bless you. Thank you for watching, subscribing to this channel, and uh, enjoy Larry Holly. started out when I was a little kid. I didn't. I was as naive as I could be at 10. I didn't know mother was pregnant. <laughs> My friend, he said, y'all gonna have another baby. And I said, no, no, they'd tell me. But they didn't tell me until it happened. And pardon me, get a drink of this coffee here. Okay. So your mom had a, a baby when she was, when you were 10 years old? Yeah, I, I told about that. It, it, the book starts out in 1936, mm -hmm. just before Buddy was born. I was 10 years old, and, and uh, they sent us off to my, my cousin's house. And when we came back, that Buddy was there with Mother in the bed. Uh, 
a little bitty baby. And it got off with me so because they hadn't told me that I, I cried about it even. Because I was supposed to know everything. I was the oldest child. And, but then it went from there to there, there on down. The kids we played with and the fun we had and the fights we had. And it goes on later on when the, the war broke out. I joined the Marines. I wanted to be a Marine. So you came home, you went on with your life? I mean, if, if I can ask, I mean, I know Buddy was important to you. I mean, was he always musically inclined, or were you musically inclined too, or your whole family, or what? Buddy was living with mother and daddy. He was about 10 when I got out of the Marines. And uh, he just thought that I hung the moon, you know, because I'd come back from the service, and, and I, I thought a lot of him, and. I'd take him hunting and stuff, and got pictures in here of, I have a whole chapter on just Buddy, uh, and me and him together, and fishing and hunting, and it was really, before he really was getting into the music, but then whenever he started getting into the music, I was right there to talk to him about it, and to, he would come to me and have a few little words of a song and say, why do you think I could make a song out of this? I'd say, yeah, I believe you can. He'd sing a little bit like he had. I said, yeah, I believe you can make a good one. And I went to Clovis with him whenever he would cut some songs. He had already been to Nashville. I sent, had the money to send him to Nashville and buy his guitar and his clothes. Mother and daddy was broke just about, didn't have enough to, except to eat. And I had some mustard out pay, and I I got jobs as carpenter and different things, all that to tell about. Post office, railroad, riding trains. I worked for all of them. And uh, I tell all about them, and some of the good things about them and the bad things. So you helped Buddy get his start in music with things like that? Is that what you yeah. Uh, he come to me, well, his first start, he came to me when I was, I was home with mother and daddy and said, Larry, I need a guitar. And I said, well, buddy, you can't play one. He said, yeah, I can learn. He said, there's a guy on the school bus, Wayne Mains is, uh, is his name, and he can play the guitar a little bit, and he showed me a few chords. I said, okay, whatever you say. I said, do you know where we can get a guitar? He said, yep, I do. He said, this guy's got a 45 Gibson. We can get for $45. And I said, well, that's reasonable enough. And they're a little, little guitar, you know. And so when we got it, he was sitting around playing it all, or picking around on it. It wasn't making much sense, but... He was always working with it. I mean, he was diligent on that thing. He loved it. First thing you know, he was playing pretty good and playing on the radio uh, with Jack Neal. And then uh, he come to me a little after that and said, well, I, I'm leaving out a lot of stuff, but uh, he said, Larry, I could go to Nashville if I had a good guitar and some clothes. And I said, well, what will it take? He said, I need a $1,000. And I said, man, that's just like asking for the moon. At that time, $1,000 was really some money. But I raked it up for him and sent him to Nashville. He brought some of the gosh awful clothes you ever seen, uh, a chartreuse coat and some red or I believe it was blue shoes and, you know, rock and roll stuff. I said, man, you blew it now. But he, they went out there and they didn't hit like they wanted to. They wanted him to do it country-wise. And he said, no, we're going to do it our way or we're not going to do it. And he said, come on, guys, let's leave. They could see that they was in the wrong town and in the wrong place. And he came on back 
and then me and him was working out here on the, he was my helper in the tile business on the city county health unit that's still out there. I got pictures of it. And, uh, he was real blue one morning. We was working, putting tile up. I said, what's wrong, buddy? He said, oh, Larry, I tell you, if I just had some help and somebody would give me a chance, I think I could make it. I said, well, what about them songs you cut in Clovis the other day? about a month earlier. He said, oh, I don't know. He says, I did the best I could. And Norman's off on vacation. And I don't know where, who to get in touch with hardly. He sent them off to New York somewhere, the, the records. And uh, I said, well, do you know who he sent them to? And he said, yeah, I think his name was Maury Dutch. And I said, do you have a phone number on him? He said, I believe I do. I said, let's go to, over to Mother's house, put up the tools, and let's go call him. And he said, buddy, baby, buddy, baby. He said, I'm glad you called. He said, Norman's out of town. But he said, I want you to know that they're playing your song on the streets of New York, and people are dancing on the streets. And Buddy said, sure enough. Well, could you send me $500? And he said, sure enough, baby, I'll do that. And so he got some money in the next day or two, and I, I didn't have a helper after that. But I didn't care. I wanted him to make it. And, what uh, song was it? Do you remember that? Was, that would be the day. So had you heard it before it was released? At, when he recorded it, did you hear it? Uh, no, I hadn't. Uh, I hadn't heard it. Uh, but did he play it for you before he recorded it? No. No? I think you, him and uh, Jerry Allison and... Uh, Joe B. Uh, got together and they went to that movie, John Wayne, where he would say, that'll be the day, that'll be the day. And they said, let's make a song like that. And they made it just overnight and early and went up there and cut it. And I was with them when they cut it the first time I heard it. You were in the studio yeah. when you played it? Yeah. I, I was in there and they cut that on the back. I'm looking for someone to love. In fact, as I thought of a verse for him on that one. And I was up there several other songs that he did. Uh, I'd go up with him because I was real interested. It, they'd stay nearly all night cutting music because the phone wouldn't ring. Nobody would bother them. Tell, and, me, tell me about that lyric in I'm Looking for Someone to Love that you wrote. The story about uh, We was going across the railroad tracks into Clovis, New Mexico. Uh, he said, I need another verse, another verse. And he, I said, well, I'd heard my uncle say this on the, when I was working for him on his bricklayer. I, I helped him as bricklayer. He said, I said, drunk man, streetcar, footstep, and there you are. But he said, I believe I'll put that in the song. I said, I was just kidding. He said, no, I'm going to put it in there. And he did. Did, did he record Old oh Boy in Clovis at that time, too? Or was that a different time? <laughs> Not that time. I didn't hear him record that. Uh, I'm looking for someone to love, and that'll be the day, and uh, maybe, baby. So he, 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 might, he might have did Old oh Boy, but he would come to me I was real busy in the tile business then and working hard. And he'd come to me and get with me and say, I want you to hear what I've got. And, and I'd listen to him and say, yeah, that ought to make a good, good, just get after it, you know. And I kept encouraging him and he'd say, well, I don't have the money to get to Clovis. And I'd say, well, okay, we'll give you a draw. <laughs> he'd been working, you know. but. We had a lot of fun together, and I was glad that every penny I ever did loan him, and he paid me back. And the fact is, uh, him and the other two, Jerry and Joe B. Joe B., by the way, Joe Bice, Bice something to eat. That's what Buddy called it. Uh, they didn't have wheels. There was any count, and they started playing in Artesia and Lampasas and places. 
And I found a red Cadillac. It's about two or three years old. It's in pretty good shape. Big old four door. And I, I paid down on it for him and give it to him. And well, about they, they, they drove the hound out of it for about six months or so, maybe longer than that. And one day that man that I got it from, I was on the note, he called me and said, Mr. Holly, would you come down here and look at this car? And I said, yeah, I guess so. What's wrong with it? He said, well, I wish you'd just look at it. He said, the boys have trashed it. And it was parked. They took, at least took it back to him and parked it, and then they left. And he, I had to pay for it. Uh, but it was all, I was glad I did, you know, because they were cooking, cooking pretty good and getting better every day. Did you did you consider Buddy a rock and roll star? I mean, did you ever think of him like that, or did you just think of him as your brother? I mean, did you see him as a rock and roll star? Um, well, he was my brother, first of all. But then I noticed that he was getting mighty good, very good. I just loved it. I never had liked Well, they hadn't meant anything like, like rock and roll before Buddy. Uh, maybe a few guys that, that Buddy had picked up from, but I didn't know them. And I liked everything Buddy did and liked the way he did it. I'd go to, with him to some of these clubs where he played, and the, the guys were pretty rough, and some of them said they was going to beat up on Buddy because the girls was going gaga over him. And I'd hang around out there sometimes just to make sure they didn't. And, but I really, it broke my heart. Is today, yeah. is today a hard day for you? I mean. Yeah. It, it, about 53 years ago today, I didn't think I could stand it. And anyway, the good thing about it, in the meantime, Buddy went off, you know, England and Australia and everywhere and was making it big. And we sort of lost track of him. Didn't get to see him very often. I tell about when he'd come back, how we'd get together and go fishing and stuff. I'll tell about all that in this book. I tell you, if anybody wants to know about Buddy or about Lubbock in, in early days, that book, and I haven't found anybody that didn't like it. Sometimes a man and wife will almost fight over it whenever they've got just one book. Uh, so um, I'm real proud of it, did it. And uh, what I was going to say, uh, um, I forget now what we're we... talking about. Buddy going overseas, coming back home. You guys went fishing, and then yeah. Uh, but I was asking you about him becoming a real popular artist and. Uh, you know, he inspired me to play. I mean, I'm I was I'm younger uh, than him, but his his music inspired me to play. Well, yeah, uh, he inspired a lot of guys, uh, but I haven't heard anybody yet that can do it just like Buddy could. He had a touch that he had four things going for him. He could write good songs one right after another, and he he could. Had a good, pretty voice, clear, a good guitar playing, and he didn't overdo it and get up there and just just chop it away like some of these guys do. He played with just what needed, and that's it. And he, it's exactly the way I would have did it if I could have. But yeah, he and not only that, he was a good innovator. Four things: right singer, player songwriter and innovator. You take some of them songs he did, if anybody else would have done them, they wouldn't have hit. But Buddy had a flair of putting in something and giving it a certain kick that made them, people really like it. Why, it's every song that he ever wrote seemed to be about love or about a girl. Why, why do you think that was? Was he, 
influenced by that around him, or what? What? what well, is this? a boy at that age—that's one of the chief things they think about—is girls. And girls, he was around a lot of them. Uh, I, I've seen where they was dancing. Them kids could dance, boy. They did uh, the bop. They didn't do this jitterbug where they were twirling them around. They did the bop. And they could do it really pretty. It was a little bit suggestive, but uh, he, uh, if, if there was uh, 10 people going to play, and all real good artists, and, and I didn't know none of them, and, and Buddy would play one, and I didn't know who it was. I'd know it was Buddy. He he did it just like I would have done it if I could have. And I've always had a pretty good ear for what made a good sound. But boy, Buddy, he he was a genius. I didn't realize what we had there for a while until. One very long. See, I'd take him up in my airplane. Uh, I, I I got to flying and riding motorcycles and everything. A big portion of this book is about my my flying and nearly crashing. And I've come within a, a second of losing my life. This was about three weeks after, three or four weeks after Buddy got killed. We nearly hit the ground, and Paul all of a sudden, just like a sheet coming off. And, and boy, I pulled back on everything that I had, the flaps and everything. And we went up again and got in the fall again. That's a long story. Um, Travis, my brother, he was with me. He said, Larry, I saw little bitty rocks on the ground. I said, yeah, we just missed it about four feet. And then there was another airplane in about a mile away from there that crashed and killed four men that day in that fog. It was a strange fog. <clears throat> but that's the only thing bad about flying. I believe if I'd had Buddy with me that night he got killed. If I'd have been flying, I, I don't believe we'd have crashed. Uh, but I'm satisfied that the, I talk about that some in this book and also on my DVD. It, it's just about Buddy. It's not about me, but Buddy. But this book is mostly about me, but with Buddy. And my wife, uh, I married the prettiest. I've been blessed. I married the prettiest girl in the world. I had an easy life, a hard life, lots of work. A fun life, lots of adventure, and if I could do it over again, I'd do it the same way. So again, as far as today, is it hard for you today, or is it, or is it, do you, have you been thinking a lot about today? I mean, 53 years ago, or what have you been thinking about today? Well, uh, I didn't, I've got where I can handle it now. Uh, but when I get to thinking actually about the plane crash, sometimes I lose it, uh, my composure. But uh, yeah, that that plane, I think the, the pilot was a little bit awestruck to have three celebrities with him, and he was just young and. He, they had a new gyroscope in that plane, a Sperry, and it works a little bit different than the regular uh, artificial horizon like I used. But I, I, I flew with both kinds, and they, they are a little different. And I think they, they just put one of them in a few days before, and he had never got to use it. And then I think that the windows fogged up pretty much just about the time they were leaving the ground. You take four warm bodies in an airplane, real tight, 
and you can't reach the windshield to clean it off. And you don't have windshield wipers on that airplane, you didn't. And I think it, I think it, it fogged over. And they thought he, this ferry looked like, one plane looked like you was artificial horizon, you're climbing to the right. And the other one, you'll be going down to the left. It's something about one of them, the plane moves, and the other, one, the earth moves, or the atmosphere. It's hard to explain, but if you try them out, you know what I mean. But I wish I'd have been there that night that he got killed and took him in my airplane. Because I've flown in to some strange places and got in all kinds of weather and, and managed to come through it. Did you ever get bitter about it or you just believe that he, it happened and you know it's too bad it happened? Or I mean, was it hard for you for a number of years after that or? No. I believe that the Lord, the Lord had a hand in it. I believe he decided that Buddy was getting too much fame too quick, and he'd come as far as he wanted him to come, and he took him. And since then, he got more popular. And the royalties that really came in, and we've, Mother and Daddy and me and Travis and Pat and all of us have had a good income since then off of what Buddy made. And, of course, I worked hard contracting and made pretty good money, too. So I was better off than the rest of them in that respect. I, I, I personally went to the cemetery today. I just wanted, I've never seen the gravesite, so that was very special for me. And I, you know what? I I don't go out there. My wife's buried over there real close, but I, I I know she's in heaven, and I feel like it's not going to be too long till the rapture comes, and I'll go too, or either I'll go with death. But before then, I'll see her, I'll see Buddy, I'll see Mother and Daddy, and uh, my sister Pat. I saw your your mom and dad buried next to Buddy. Yeah. But I, I've also been to the crash site. I went there four years ago. I had the owner of that land take me out to the crash site. I don't think you've ever been there, though, have you? Yeah. Oh, you I were. was out there. Just uh, the plane was still there, and uh, it all it was just rolled up like a ball, and there was stuff laying everywhere, and they, somebody had gathered up the garments. There was a stack of clothes about this high, and that man asked me, they took us out there. He said, do you want any of this stuff? And I said, no. And I reached down. I said, I will take this a little dop kit for the keep his razor and his toothbrush and stuff. I said, I'll take this. And I took it. And it, I didn't even open it for years after that. One time I opened it, talcum powder or foot powder or something, maybe it's tooth powder. It was all in there, and it was, it was just a mess. And you could see where the fake deal on the bottom had been torn loose because it was cloth. And the, the gun was heavy enough that it must have came up, with, and the gun kept going. It went over the fence and landed in the pasture. And that farmer picked it up and Naturally, he, he did just what I'd do. He'd see if it'll shoot, you know, and he, he shot one bullet, and it shot. And it'd been in the snow all winter. Well, now the, then the word gets out that there's, somebody shot the pilot. That, that's a bunch of nonsense. So you were at the crash site, and you... Yeah. Right, that next day? The or next day. It should be like today. The he third. had just gone to the funeral home. They were still getting him prepared. And I, I went up there to identify the body. And I was so sad. I said, J.E., he was my brother-in-law. I said, I can't go in there. And he said, I'll do it. 
And he came out there just white as a ghost. He said, I'm glad you didn't go. He said it was bad. So. Did you guys bring Buddy back here and have a, a yeah. ceremony here? Or yeah, they, service? we didn't bring him in the plane that I was in, but another plane, a charter plane, brought the body back. I know the guys that brought it back. Uh, I knew them then, sort of. Uh, but I love flying. And I, I respect the fact that you can get hurt flying. Just quickly, I, I saw a documentary, I think Maria Elena said something like, Buddy always wanted his music to be re remembered or he wanted to be recognized. Is that how he was? He wanted people to... Yeah, I made the remark. <coughs> I made the remark myself. I said, Buddy wasn't after a bunch of money. He wanted to be understood and people to recognize what he could do. He, that's what he wanted more than anything. I, I know at one time when he first started and it was getting pretty good, he, he, had, he got a little bit cocky, you know, and one day, Mother got me to one side and said, I wish you'd talk to Buddy. He's getting where he won't even hardly answer me whenever he, you know, he, he's in his own world and he's not treating people real, real nice. And so I got him out in the car and I talked to him about an hour. I said, no, I want you to know if you're going to make it in this world, you're going to have to be friendly to people and be compassionate, treat mother and daddy with real respect, because they're mother, my mother and daddy too. And I talked to him a while, and we both cried about it. And mother told me about a week later, she said, I don't know what you told Buddy, but he was a different person. And we noticed he was a different person to the public and everybody. So I felt like I had a little bit to do with getting him over the hump. Did you ever meet any of the Beatles? No. Because they were influenced by Buddy. Yeah. Uh, just when me and you, I didn't think they could hold a candle to him. <laughs> but. I agree. Uh, oh, yeah, I met Paul McCartney. And okay. Was back backstage with him in Birmingham, England, and I saw his show, but it didn't impress me at all. It was under wings, but he's a nice guy, a friendly guy. What's your fondest memory of Buddy? I guess sitting around the campfire talking after we'd been fishing all day. And maybe he'd have his guitar and play on a few little songs and things. And yeah, that's my fondest memories. Did you speak at his memorial service when they had a, a service at a church or at the graveside? Did you speak at all? No, I, I was too distraught. I couldn't have spoke. Was it a big event or is it just for family? Oh man, that church was a big, they was thousands of people. Uh, I, I didn't look around to see, but they said it was, it was packed with standing room only and the parking lot was all full. And Why would Buddy marry her? Because Buddy's a Christian. I mean, what happened with that? I think uh, he was living so fast and so hard that he didn't have time to really get in love with a girl and court her like they, like they should, you know. And one, he had had a girl in high school, Echo McGuire, and he thought a lot of her, and her folks didn't think a lot of Buddy, and they whisked her off to a college out of town, some way off, and but he sort of felt like she was jerked out from under him, you know. And I, whenever he saw Maria, she was a pretty little thing. Uh, I've seen some pictures of her. Uh, he said, I'm going to marry that girl for any first saw her. 
And Jerry and Joe B was with him. They said, no, you can't marry her. And he said, you just watch me. And he started in and I mean, he had all the confidence in the world of what he could do. Uh, and he, I've, I've seen him actually get emotional and cry because he couldn't make a song do like he wanted it to. When we were out on a campground or somewhere was playing, and, and he said, I can't play the guitar. We'd had a few beers, you know, and he said, I can't play the guitar no more. I got on top of him and had to wrestle him down keep him from busting his guitar. And I said, yes, you can. You can play it. You're just drunk. <laughs> but, I mean, me and Buddy was close. I, he was my protege, I guess you'd say, and I was his uh, mentor. One of the things that makes me laugh is the last time I was here, you, you used the expression, do it up brown. Yeah. Tell me where that comes from again, because I've explained that to some people, and they, they I said that's a West Texas expression. Tell me where that comes from. And uh, well, Uncle Henry, I guess, got it started. He was in. There's a whole chapter on him in this book. Uh, doing it up brown is just meaning it's get it down just right. <laughs> Bill, uh, Bill, what's his name? Bill Kearns here in town. He writes about all the music and everything about people, mm -hmm. uh, the bands that come through. He, I talked to him. I, I, I gave him one of my DVDs, and he said, "What is this doing it up brown?" And I said, well, "I thought anybody knew that." He said, "No." I said, "This doing it the best it can be done." I'm using it. I like that. Yeah. We've said it all over life. It just. Did you ever listen to that song that Don McLean did, American Pie, at the beginning yeah. of that? Do those lyrics mean anything to you about the day the music died? Oh, uh, uh, they're sort of weird. Uh, and when you get into the depths of that song, it really gets all weird. But just the first part talking about, you know, February made me shiver with every paper yeah. I delivered. It was definitely about Buddy yeah. and Chevrolet. And, but when he gets into that... The, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The, 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 yeah, the, that sort of... To the coast and all that. He sort of should have left that out, I think. It, was a, it, it is a different song, but... I think about that song, but um, when I went out to the gravesite today, I was the only one there, and it was, it was pretty. It was a very solemn moment for me. I never, I've always wanted to visit the gravesite, and then you know, seeing it with Sherry is, is amazing. Um, but I sang a song to Buddy out there, and uh, I just, I just felt moved to sing a song, so I just did. But um, it really meant a lot to me to go out there. There was some. Flowers yeah, it, it affects different people in different ways. But I'm such a strong believer in the fact that he's not out there. That's just the bones and laying in there. And even the body that's in there won't go to heaven. It, it'll just be, the, the, the body will go, but it won't be flesh and blood because there won't be no flesh and blood up there what our preacher said. It just the soul, the spirit, and you'll have a new body like Jesus Christ when you get there. And I'm, in a way, I'm looking forward to the day that I can be up there and see the Lord and see Buddy and see my wife and mother and daddy. They're all up there. Any closing thoughts about today? I mean, today's is, 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 is today a special day for you or just another day? It, uh, no, it's just another day. I mean, I got over being really upset and emotional. I, I think of Buddy not out there in the graveyard. I think of him up there with the Lord and with my wife and the rest of the people, mother and daddy. And, 
Uh, I, I, I just live to get up there, but I'm going to stay here as long as I can because the Lord wants me to talk to people. That's a good, that's good. Do you ever listen to Buddy's music anymore? Do you ever listen to a song here and there? No, I don't listen to them. Uh, I've never played any on my fiddle or nothing or the guitar. Uh, in fact is, I don't like to hear any of Buddy's music by anybody else but Buddy. But I listen to them every now and then. I hear them all the time when they're playing them, but I don't, I've got albums that are never open to him. Can I take a picture with me and you? You can stay right there. Yeah. Whenever I, and I took one with us last time, but I just thought I'd take one today too. But.